you're just sitting there and bam, there's the tech news. It slaps you in the face like a powerful pink salmon leaping out of a river. It's, there's no feeling like it. If you're thinking about being one of the first to adopt the new ARC graphics cards from Intel, I'd say knowing how much VRAM they're gonna have is pretty darn important. And now Team Blue has confirmed how much to expect. 16 gigabytes on the A770 and eight gigs on the more mid-range A750. Notice how I said more mid-range? They're all pretty mid. Although the memory is gonna be run-of-the-mill GDDR6 on both models, it is good to see the A770 getting a full 16 gigs, as it's become increasingly common in recent years for games to push up against VRAM limits as textures and other visual assets take up more and more space. Since 16 gigabytes is more than you find on many even higher end cards, it might end up being a key way that Intel differentiates itself from teams red and green, other than, you know, color scheme. There have been oodles of headlines about chip shortages over the past couple of years, but it turns out there's also a shortage of cables. Specifically, fiber optic cables have gotten much more expensive this year due to key components also rising in price, as well as from higher demand for online services post pandemic. We're all at home, right? Of course, this comes at a pretty lousy time considering that big tech has been trying to lay more and more cables under the ocean and mobile carriers are in need of fiber optics in order to build out 5G networks. While the fiber optic crunch, which sounds like a cereal I would buy, directly affects back-end infrastructure more than consumers, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed that the extra costs won't find their way down to us when we pay our internet bill. But I'm sure our corporate overlords would never do anything like that. Here's a bizarre story out of Russia that has nothing to do with Vladimir Putin sitting at his comically long and definitely not compensating for anything banquet table. Last week, a robot that was programmed to play chess was facing off against a seven-year-old boy, but instead of, you know, playing chess, the robot broke the poor kid's finger, which I think is against the rules. Apparently, the boy tried to move a piece before the robot was expecting him to, resulting in the bot grabbing a finger instead of a rook. The kid deserves credit for finishing the tournament, even though it's unclear why a chess bot would need to use bone crushing force just to pick up a piece. Regarding the accident, Sergei Lazarev of the Moscow Chess Federation commented, this is of course bad. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by AMD. They're a little processor company, you may have heard of them. The Game on AMD sales event is on now until August 5th, so if you're looking to upgrade or build a new gaming PC, you won't want to miss the best deals on AMD Ryzen and Radeon products. And select purchases of AMD Radeon RX 6000 series graphics cards come with a Raise the Game bundle featuring up to three games. Bundle that GPU with an AMD Ryzen processor and you can take advantage of features like AMD Smart Access Memory and FSR for even more performance. The deals just keep getting better. Learn more about all the deals AMD has to offer at the link below. The Apple Watch is getting a long-awaited facelift, at least according to Apple Insider, Mark Gurman. The new Pro or higher end version due to come out later this year is apparently getting the largest display ever on an Apple Watch, as well as body temperature sensors and a bigger battery that could let you go several days without a charge and a tougher chassis in case you take your smartwatch into hazardous environments like Russian chess tournaments. One of the most hype features of the Xbox Series X was faster load times, and it delivered on that with its use of PCIe SSDs. But now the Xbox dev team has made boot times even quicker in a recent update. You can expect to save roughly five seconds, which is a significant amount of time when you consider how previously it took an absolutely glacial 12 seconds to start up. I'm still gonna reach for my phone, but this is progress. Google has canned Blake Lemoyne, who you might remember from his claim last month that the company had developed a sentient AI. The official reasoning that they gave was that he breached Google's data security, but Lemoyne is apparently gearing up for legal action. No word yet if the allegedly almost human AI construct will be called to testify in court. It appears we have a new challenger in the gaming monitor space, none other than ASRock who are much more well-known for their motherboards. But the company has apparently registered a few models with a Korean government agency, and at least two of them have refresh rates in the triple digits, which makes sense if their focus is gonna be on gaming. We still don't know when they'll be available or in which countries, or if you'll be able to turn them on by jumping the pins with a screwdriver. And if you're a T-Mobile customer, you might have some free money headed your way as Team Magenta, can I call them that? 
is paying around 350 million bucks to settle some class action suits regarding the theft of personal data of nearly 77 million customers. If you had them as your carrier in August of last year, keep an eye out for a check. But given how many people that money is going to, don't expect your windfall to cover much more than last month's data overages. That's our show. Come back Wednesday for more tech news. It's better than free money, baby.